back to the channel, and I am here today with this wonderful Gretsch G2210 Streamliner Junior Jet Club, which is a big name, but this guitar has big tones for a small price. This guitar is $299.99 retail. Last year, Philip Knight did a video in which he called this the best guitar you can buy for under $300, and I had already owned this guitar for a while by that point, and I absolutely agree. I talked about this a little bit in my video review of the Epiphone SG Special, but about this time last year I was looking for a new and expensive guitar because I hadn't bought a new guitar in a few years, and I was in search of something that I'd never had, and I really had something in mind that had P90s, but it was in the middle of the pandemic, uh, people were getting stimulus checks, stuck at home, learning to play guitar or maybe people like me who are already serious players and just looking to add uh, to their collection with something fun, and it was very hard to come across uh, a great many of the uh, inexpensive guitar models, especially uh, the Epiphone uh, SG Special and Les Paul Special, which were very new at that point and hard to come by. So I was looking for a while, and I went into the Showtime Music Store at, in the Crossroads Mall near Beckley, West Virginia, and found that they had started carrying Gretsch. And I had never uh, owned, and I don't think I'd ever played a Gretsch before. And I played this guitar and the uh, Double Jet, which is a little bit fancier and about $200 more. And if you look on YouTube for the Andertons video in the, for the Double Jet, it's the one that Lee Anderton said might be the best guitar he ever played for $500. And that was a fantastic guitar. But there was just something about this one I just loved. And the Double Jet was fancier. Uh, this is just a NATO body. I say just, but I love it and it sounds amazing. Uh, whereas the Double Jet is a mahogany body with a maple cap. And it you know, has metallic silver knobs. Looks amazing. Uh, not that this isn't a... Uh, really nice looking guitar but it really looked the part of a uh, you know blinged out uh, Gretsch and I love them both but I truly love this one I love the way it sounded and I love the way it felt and they both had these fantastic broad Tron pickups which they're not filter Trons they are uh, full-size humbuckers but they're not quite as fat as a Gibson humbucker but they have more brightness and bite to them and for someone who's generally a Fender player, I absolutely love that because it really is the best of both worlds, in my opinion, of the Fender and Gibson sounds. So I'm looking for something with a little bit more girth uh, than one of my Telecasters or Stratocasters. This is just about perfect. So I played them both, really like them both, but I love this one. And it was a little bit brighter sounding than the Double Jet. Perhaps that's because the Double Jet did have the mahogany body and make maple cap, and uh, having Les Paul con type construction did seem more like a direct Les Paul competitor. Because even though this is Les Paul shaped, it's very much its own thing. And uh, another area where they differ is that this one is a bolt-on neck, whereas the Double Jet is a set neck. And I admit, at first, uh, that bothered me. And I went home and I thought about it for a couple of hours about which one, if either, I was going to get. And I realized that was silly of me because most of my favorite guitars are Fenders with bolt-on necks. And the bolt-on neck might be part of the reason why this one had a more Fender-esque sound and appealed to me more. So I went back, played them both again. I ended up buying this one. And again, I just absolutely love the sound of these great pickups. It's fairly lightweight. I think it weighs right at eight pounds. The neck is just a tremendous shape. They call it a thin U, I believe. And it's, uh, even though they say U, it is by no means a baseball bat neck like a uh, 50s Telecaster. This is probably, it feels to me, slightly thinner than a Fender Modern C. And it, it is, when you think about it, more U shaped as well. It really is, but it's not a fat neck at all. 12 inch radius, 22 uh, medium jumbo frets. Indian Laurel fretboard, which I've said many times and continue to maintain is the best looking rosewood alternative. It says Gretsch on the headstock. Uh, nothing fancy, but the tuners look good and they function well. It is made in Indonesia. 
and it's just a great guitar. And one of the things I love about it is, again, it is a full-fledged Gretsch. And you get a piece of that heritage and that history and that vibe for 300 bucks, And you just really can't beat that. And uh, the results I've had with this guitar speak for itself. Not long after I brought it home, I was uh, in the process of recording my album, uh, these empty arms and I was working on the song which became Forever is Yesterday which I'd originally written almost 20 years before that under another name and was trying to tweak it and this guitar and playing that song on this inspired me to make some changes to the verse chord progression which made the song what it is now and how it appears on the album and like a lot of great guitars when this one was very new it inspired that and that brought that out in me when I was recording my song Look the Other Way, which most of the people I've talked to have named that as their favorite song on my album. Uh, I was playing the main solo with uh, trying with Telecasters, the Les Paul, SG, PRS, and none of them really gave me the sound in that particular mix, so I love all those guitars and they sound great, that I was looking for. Picked up this one, put it in the middle position, which is my favorite lead sound for this guitar, and it was exactly what I was looking for, and that's what's on the album. It's also one of the many rhythm guitars in the chorus of the song, These Empty Arms. And uh, it's just a fantastic guitar. It's on the album and all those in other places as well. And it's one of my favorite guitars, period. Not just for the price, period. And it's one I can't imagine, uh, unless I was in very dire straits, I would ever part with. Because I love it so much and that special uh, experience of finding it in the music store and bonding with it there. Now it's wonderful but it's not perfect. One thing, and this isn't necessarily uh, a negative, but it has this wraparound uh, bridge which is great for the sound but not the best for intonation. And uh, again, that's not really a good or bad thing, it's just personal preference. Uh, I like it because, like everyone, I want the intonation to be as good as possible, but I'm not someone who gets super uptight about it because I do realize that electric guitars are always going to have, to some degree, imprecise uh, intonation with straight frets, and you're just never going to get it perfect. As long as you get it as good as possible, that's fine for me. Mm -hmm. So this does not bother me at all. Uh, but I know to some people that might be an issue. And one thing that I can definitely say, uh, just so you uh, don't think I'm just you know, heaping praise upon this guitar and not being realistic. It is a $300 guitar, and with many inexpensive guitars, uh, the electronics, other than the pickups themselves, are not great. Uh, the switch, though it sounds like it has a substantial feel, sometimes I have to really wiggle it to get the neck position to work. In fact, on some outtakes that you're, of uh, the sound samples you're about to see, which did not make the cut for this video, I had to stop and really wiggle it to get the neck position to make any sound. And the knobs look and feel great. They're very smooth, but the uh, pots themselves do not have a very linear adjustment to them. They're not one through 10, uh, 10 different settings uh, like you would hope. It is basically all the way on, and this is the tone knob, and this is the volume. Uh, part of the way on and off, and there's really not a lot of in-between. Uh, so if you're someone, and, if, and I use the tone and volume knobs on my guitars, but I'm not one who's constantly riding them and adjusting them for the most part, so it's not a huge deal to me, but if you're someone who does do that a lot, uh, you might want to keep that in mind. Now, of course, these are all relatively easy and inexpensive fixes. I've not changed them on this guitar. This is 100% stock, but I did want to... Uh, make sure I uh, stated that and I just didn't state the positives. I also really like this uh, tortoise pit guard here. It looks fantastic, especially with this color, which they call gunmetal, which is similar but not identical to a uh, Pelham Blue. If you see my SG Special uh, video, I hold the two guitars up together and you can't tell there is a difference. But uh, it's a fantastic guitar. Now I'd like to share some sound samples with you. The first one you're going to hear is a uh, full band, 16 bar uh, mix I made with drums, bass, the neck position, playing the rhythm guitar, and this in-between position I like so much for leads playing the lead. I don't have the details of the track up while you're listening to it, along with the uh, specs of the guitar. Then I'll play some uh, solo 
uh, guitar sound samples with different amps uh, to give you a taste of what all it can do. And then I'll uh, come back for my final thoughts. So I uh, hope you enjoy hearing it. And uh, let's see what this thing can do.
I hope those sound samples help give you an idea of what this guitar can really do. It really is a fantastic guitar, and I truly believe of every guitar I've played at $300 or less retail, this is by far the best. It looks cool. It has the great uh, Gretsch headstock. It is a full-fledged Gretsch. The same pickups you'd get higher on up the range. You really can't can't miss with this one for 300 bucks. For somebody like me who uh, generally prefers Fender sounds, this is great when I need something a little bit thicker but still has uh, that great articulation. It uh, would be a great guitar for anyone from a pure beginner to a pro because for a pure beginner, this would be an amazing guitar to have for your first guitar. And for a professional, it would be a lot of fun to just play around with and it would be one you would feel comfortable taking to a gig when maybe you wouldn't want to take a more expensive guitar. So I give this my highest recommendation. Uh, the electronics could be improved, absolutely, but otherwise, there's nothing about this guitar uh, that I would change. And I really think uh, I'm gonna enjoy it for many, many years to come. And if you can, do yourself a favor and pick one up yourself. So here's a little outro jam. I look forward to seeing you again next time.